Hey everybody, Doomwake here, and welcome back to another spoiler discussion video. Feels like it was just yesterday we were talking about Modern Horizons 3, and here we are! Bloomboro is now officially all spoiled. And today we are going to be discussing some standard cards. So for those of you who don't know, the standard rotation is happening with the release of Bloomboro. And along with it, rotating out will be Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, Streets of Nuka Pena, and the two Innistrad sets, Crimson Vow and Midnight Hunt. So we got a little bit of a fresh metagame. And it's interesting because I haven't really explored a lot of standard since the last time I played, which was the last RC in Dallas where I played Golgari midrange. That was a format that was a lot of Esper, it was won by Adam Weiss on the kind of red aggressive deck. A lot of Esper, a lot of Legends, a lot of the Team Analyst. And most of those decks are rotating, so it's going to be very interesting to see what the format looks like. There's definitely some early contenders as far as decks that survive the rotation. Among those, definitely the most popular is Boros Convoke. But, you know, we have some tools. There was Pest Control. There's Temporary Lockdown is still going to be legal. That one's in Dominaria, so it's not rotating. And we get two more years of Shield Red. And by two years, I mean one, obviously. With all that out of the way, let's take a look and see what cards look good from Bloomboro for Standard. So the first one that I want to look at, this is not necessarily a top 10 per se. I just put these in a random order. But these are the cards that I think have a lot of potential. And the first one I want to bring to your attention is Big Hugs, the Grizzly Guardian. Nice little Badger Warrior here. This is a little bit of a complicated mana cost. So it's red, red, green, green and X. So X can be zero, so it can be a four mana five five trample. When it enters the battlefield, you exile the top X cards of your library until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. And then you may play an additional land on each of your turns. So there has been some gruel support in the most recent couple of sets, namely Onsrog the Quake Mole, which is a card that I spent quite a bit of time on with testing for the last regional championship. I was really trying to make Red Green a good deck. Now, it's not necessarily that Red Green needed more four drops per se, but this one reads pretty powerful to me. The body is pretty good. 5-5 five, five Trample, it can be four mana. And then it scales really well later into the game. And even if you pay X equals zero, you can still play an additional land the turn you play it. A card that hits pretty hard and is one that scales very, very well later into the game. So if there's any sort of red-green aggressive deck, this could be a good curve topper for that type of strategy. Next up, we have Mist Breath Elder. This is one that I discussed on my Pioneer spoiler discussion video, and honestly, one of my favorite cards in the entire set. There's so many cool things you can do with this. It's one green mana for a 2-2 Frog Warrior, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, you return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, you get a counter on it. Otherwise, you may return it to its owner's hand. So basically, if you have a creature, you have to return it, and if you don't, then you just get a one mana 2-2. Two -two. But Standard is a format that there are a lot more creatures that have entered the battlefield abilities. One that kind of comes to mind is Novice Inspector. And I, I really think there might be some sort of green-white. I'm not sure if it wants to be Convoke specifically, but imagine returning Knight Aaron of Eos to this after you've cast it for effectively zero mana, and you have Warden of the Inner Sky still legal. There's another new card from the new set. I, I can't remember the name, but it's two and a white, make three, one, one rabbits. That could be very good for convoking as well. Some things to think about. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other good cheap green and or white creatures that have good enter the battlefield abilities, and this seems to work pretty well. And what's nice about this is even in the draws where you're not going off with it, you can just pick up some random creature and really start hitting your opponent very quickly. And just one mana 2-2, two, two, really good design. So next up on the list is Ember Heart Challenger. This one, if you remember, if you saw the Pioneer video, this was number one on my cards to move for Pioneer. And I think it's really good in standard too. So this is two mana for a 2-2 two, two, Haste and Prowess. And then it has the Valiant ability, which means that whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability you control for the first time each turn, you exile the top card of your library. And then until end of turn, you may play that card. Card. So it works very well with things that target it. Now, there's a couple of important cards that are rotating, both Ancestral Anger and Play With Fire, because Play With Fire was a good one mana instant to be able to hit off of this if you could maybe trigger it on your opponent's turn, since it only triggers once per turn. We're going to have to find some new ways to do that. Maybe Questing Druid could be something where if you have three mana up, you can end of their turn, Monstrous Rage, hit a Questing Druid, maybe play the Seek the Beast half of that, and go from there. 
But again, 2 mana 2-2 two, two Prowess Haste is already really good, even if it didn't have any other ability. And this one seems like it has a ton of potential. You just need to find a lot of ways to target it. Next up on the list, we have Keen-Eyed Curator. This is green-green for a 3-3. Three, three. It says, as long as there are four or more card types among cards exiled with it, it gets plus four, plus four, and has Trample. That's pretty big. And then you could pay one mana to exile target card from a graveyard. A graveyard, very important there not just your own. But what I like about this card is it's two mana for a 3-3, three, three, already fine stats. It's Graveyard Hate for relatively inexpensive. It's on the, the rate of Scavenging Use, which was an, a standard all-star back in the day. And it's one of those cards where if you're just playing it face up, even if you're not specifically trying to put a bunch of different types into your deck, it's still totally fine. It's really serviceable. But it even has this other deck building challenge where you figure the most common card types among cards that people play are creature, instant, sorcery, land. But so you put an extra couple of enchantments that go to the graveyard to have that extra type, you're more likely to be able to get the fourth type for the curator. And also, if you are some sort of self-mill deck, if there's enough of a self-mill focus and standard, you can pay four mana, do it all in one turn, and then hit them for seven trample that turn. A lot of things to think about with this card, and one that I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out. And again, if we go back to the Mistbreath Elder, just more green aggressive things, and that might tie into the next card that we talk about as well. Champion of the Parish is a card that has a very long history and standard, and I don't really know if we've ever seen anything quite like this. We've seen a new attempt, Champion of the Perished, which worked with zombies, but Valley Nightcaller is kind of ridiculous. This is a very simple card, one mana for a 1-1 one, one trample, and it says whenever another frog, rabbit, raccoon, or squirrel you control enters, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Now, the card you just saw, Keen-Eyed Curator, happens to be a raccoon. Miss Breath Elder, Frog. You see where I'm going with this. These three cards put together form this really aggressive, powerful mono green shell. Could even maybe be a second color, although you may want to skew towards mono green for keen eyed. But just a lot of power with these three really cheap green cards. And I'm very excited to be working on some sort of green aggressive deck with probably this at the at the center of it. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit with the next one, which is actually three parentheses. There are three lizards that I want to bring up here, and I want to talk about these as a package deal. Gev, Scaled Scorch, Hired Claw, and Iridescent Vine Lasher. So we'll start with Gev. This is the henchman of the bunch. So black and a red for a 3-2. Ward, pay two life. So even if they kill it, you get a little bit of life there. Other creatures you control enter with an additional plus one, plus one counter on them for each opponent who lost life this turn. And then whenever you cast a lizard spell, deals one damage to target opponent. The important part about that is the, the second ability, it works on cast. So if you cast a lizard spell, you deal them a damage, and your creature that you just cast will enter the battlefield because you've already resolved the second ability. That's an important part about this card. And then the other two cards, some relatively aggressive lizard one drops here. Hired Claw is one mana for a 1-2. Whenever you attack with one or more lizards, deals one damage to target opponent. So even if you just are attacking with itself, effectively two power, and you can pay two mana to put a plus one, plus one counter on itself, Activate only if an opponent lost life this turn and only once each turn. Very simple. By itself, you go turn one hard claw, turn two attack, deal them a damage, and then before damage, you can pay two to put a counter on it. So you've already attacked them for three on turn two, and you can just continuously grow it from there. And then last but not least is Iridescent Vine Lasher. Single black mana for a 1-2. It has the Offspring ability, which means you can pay additional 2 as you cast the spell. And if you do, you make a 1-1 one, one copy of it. So you can effectively pay 3 mana for a 1-2 and a 1-1, one, one, both lizards. And then it has Landfall. Whenever a land you control enters, this creature deals 1 damage to target opponent. More ways to get damage for Gev, more ways to trigger Hard Claw. And these three cards seem to form a very aggressive backbone. And what's interesting, the more that I'm thinking about it as I'm going through this video, it seems like they're making aggro a very big focal point for standard. You see the green frog rabbit stuff, you see this red black lizard stuff, so very interesting to see if standard becomes a lot more aggressive than it has been in the past, where maybe you're used to mid-range soup fests, but if you're playing standard these days, you might want to show up with those temporary lockdowns. All right, we got a couple more here to talk about. So Essence Channeler, this is one in a white for a 2-1 Bat Cleric. 
As long as you've lost life this turn, it has flying and vigilance. The pain lands, by the way, worth noting, not rotating. Whenever you gain life, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. And when it dies, you put its counters on target creature you control, similar to like a modular type ability. There's plenty of good ways to gain life in standard. There was actually already this white black life gain deck formulating with Gumdrop Poisoner, Amalia, Ruin Lurker Bat, Deep Cavern Bat. And I think Essence Channeler kind of ties the room together because that deck was missing an aggressive two drop and this kind of does that. Now, unfortunately, we are losing Voice of the Blessed, which was a pretty big part of that deck, but this is some sort of suitable replacement. And it's nice because it triggers off of losing life and gaining life. And that deck probably wants to play the Painlands anyways and has a lot of life gain. And if you have lifelink creatures like Deep Cavern Bat or Gumdrop Poisoner, then maybe there's some sort of sacrifice effect or sacrifice theme in that deck where you make this thing big, sacrifice it, load up onto a Deep Cavern Bat. So some things to think about with this, but seems to work very well with Amalia, which was already a pretty powerful card. Dark Confidant, this is not. This is Dark Star Augur. So two and a black for a 2-3 flyer, has offspring for a single black mana, Remember, that's if you pay the black, you get a 1-1. One, one. That's a copy of it. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, you reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand, and you lose life equal to its mana value. I'm not entirely sure how often you're going to be offspringing this, because it actually seems a little sketchy, because you, on turn four, maybe you're already under a little bit of pressure. You make two copies of this, and then you say go. Your opponent doesn't kill either of them, and then you're in danger of taking upwards of maybe six damage on your upkeep with both of them. It could be a little awkward, but even just as a three drop, two three flyer that has that dark confidant text seems like it is priced to move in standard. We'll have to see how the rest of the black aggressive core fleshes out, but Deep Cavern Bat, Shieldred, those cards are staples of standard and are still going to remain in the format, and I would not be surprised if there was some sort of black aggressive deck with maybe this. Shieldred probably tops the curve, but this card seems very good in a deck like that. All right, last two here, Rotten Mouth Viper. This is six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. As an additional cost to cast it, you may sacrifice any number of non-land permanents, and then this spell costs one less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this way. Whenever it enters or attacks, you put a blight counter on it. Then for each blight counter, each opponent loses four life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. Even for six mana, you're getting a 6-6 six, six that enters and they either lose four or they sacrifice a permanent or discard a card. Not the best stats or not the best set of abilities for a six mana card, but reasonable. What really gets me about this card and the way that you want to build around it is it works very well with tokens. If you haven't seen the Bloomboro spoilers, there's a very big food theme that's going on in this set. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how easy it's going to be to make an abundance of food early on. I'm not entirely sure the fastest you can cast this. The card that I talked about earlier, the two in a white make three one ones works pretty well with that because you get a three mana discount on it in some sort of maybe like white black sacrifice deck or maybe black green food. I think there's a black green three two that makes a food when it enters or leaves. So you play that on two, sacrifice it on three. That's two food that lets you cast this on turn four. So there's some ways to cheat the cost on it. And if you can reliably cast this thing on turn three or turn four, it's really good, uh, especially if you are putting any sort of pressure on them. The four life matters a lot more, whereas if you're some sort of control deck and you cast this, they'll just be like, OK, I'll take four and then kill it. Not a huge deal. But if your life total is also under pressure, then it's going to be a lot harder to take that four damage. I like this card a lot. And then last but certainly not least, we have the infamous Cruel Claw. This is black, red and one for a three, three menace reasonable body and whenever it deals combat damage to a player you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card you may cast that card by discarding a card rather than paying its mana cost there is an element of randomness to this i'm not entirely sure if you want to be going super deep and playing this with ways to manipulate the top of your library like scrying or anything like that there is the i believe it's called insatiable avarice which is the card that people were playing with the Blood Letter of Aquasance to set that combo up. You could play something like that to put a card on top and then have this cast that for free. That actually doesn't sound that bad now that I'm thinking about it. But even just 
Being able to turn lands into spells in a Rakdos deck, especially if your Rakdos deck is running out of gas, that ability seems very, very powerful. Just a way to effectively never run out of gas. If you're drawing lands late in the game, hit them with this, bang, you found another spell. Again, the combos with Avarice could be good. Could set something, maybe you play this with Bloodletter of Eclazots and you do that kind of combo. But yeah, there's, there's definitely some things to think about and aggressively costed, Good body, very good trigger, helps you not run out of gas. Like this card a lot, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of this one. All right, so that wraps up our standard discussion. As you see, now that we have a standard and a pioneer video, I think with the release of Bloomborough, I kind of want to get back to a little bit more standard and or pioneer content. So be on the lookout for that once we get access to Bloomborough cards. Again, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, thumbs up, let me know what you thought down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. And with all that said, I will see you guys in the next one.